Welcome back, troglodytes, to Would You Rock or Not? The Gibson Les Paul Double Cut, eh, it doesn't get a lot of love because its design didn't come out until 1998. You could argue that the Gibson Spirit from the 80s was a predecessor, but regardless, it wasn't a vintage classic, but rather a new design for Gibson likely intended to cut into PRS's market share. It was loosely based on the beloved 1958 Les Paul Double Cut Jr., except it featured higher-end appointments to attract more buyers. However, what many people love about the originals is the simplicity of them, so these were definitely sculpted for a very niche market. For the first year introduction, you now had binding on the 24 fret neck with trapezoid inlays, Gibson Mother of Pearl logo, a carved flay maple top, a tunematic bridge and tailpiece, dual humbuckers, and a few cool finish options, ranging from ambered natural to translucent black and even some fruitier flavors. There was even a studio version made with stripped down appointments like dot inlays. When compared side by side to an original, it is a little bit difficult to see that these are based on the same idea. Personally, I believe the additional two frets and lack of pickguard throw off the beauty of the original look and contributes to these not being as popular as their single cut brethren. However, the original run is not the main topic for today's Wyron segment, but rather a take off of this late 90s design with improvements. What is different about this run from 2011 you ask? Well, mainly the pickups, additional finish options, there's some more appointments, but let's just go ahead and dig into this. First, take a look at this guitar, and now back to the original 98 version. If you're like me, there's something strangely more attractive about this modern one, but you can't quite place your finger on it. Yes, this one has P90 pickups instead of humbuckers, which might be part of the reasoning this instrument's layout doesn't seem as crowded, but that's not it. This 2011 version has 22 frets, which ultimately changes the location of the pickups, and in my opinion, for the better. However, if you wanted a 24 fret Gibson, you're now out of luck, so it's a double-edged sword to be aware of. Even more important than that though, Note that the new one is more like a proper Les Paul's cutaway in the fact that it is rounded off the fretboard instead of meeting straight on like the original run. This rounded cutaway really transforms the look and differentiates these two. This 2011 run also featured a maple top with a chambered mahogany body and a mahogany neck paired with a rosewood fretboard. It also has the binding and trapezoid inlays, but another feature that makes this more less Paul than the original run is the lack of a comfort carve on the back of the body, as well as binding along the top. Electronic wise, they are very similar besides their pickups with a master volume and tone control with a three-way selector switch located by the bridge. These were offered in gold top, black, and white finishes, but here's the real kicker, with dark backs. I personally really dig the dark back feature as that is a color you don't see too often from Gibson USA. It is normally reserved for special custom shop guitars. It appears black from far away, but get it in the light just right and it's more like a dark molasses reddish amber hue. This idea originated from the 50s when some of the gold top Les Pauls featured this. So all in all, this design, it's kind of like a Les Paul, but just it has another cutaway over here. So whether you appreciate this design or not, they are usually a pretty good value on the used market, especially when compared to the single cut standards. Most are selling in that $1,500 range, plus or minus $300 for condition and originality. If you're interested in purchasing one of these, this particular episode was actually sponsored by the owner and seller of this Gold Top DC. You can find it listed on Reverb for $1,500 in shipping or best offer, which 
Honestly, it's a pretty good deal. I'm surprised that this has lasted as long as it has. I mean, look at that watch count, 54 in six days. <laughs> That's better than most of my listings. But now the big question, how do one of these things sound? Let's take a brief look at this playing demo from Greg's Guitars. You can find the link to this video in the description. The only question left, would you rock a double cutaway Les Paul with P90s or not? Leave your answer in the comment section below, and don't forget to vote at the official poll on troglisguitarshow.com. Thank you troglodytes for watching, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you would like to sponsor your own episode of the Trogley's Guitar Show, you can now do that through my website. Simply visit troglisguitarshow.com, click on shop, and there you will find the information. It's a great idea if you want me to talk about a certain model that you're passionate about, or hey, if you're selling the guitar, this also gives you some exposure there. You can also sponsor a full review and demo.